Good afternoon, everybody. What's well, up, everybody? I got Montero here today. Filter in. What's up, Jay? So uh, you guys are listening to the or watching the Misfit Happy Hour. And if you've noticed, we've rotated. We started rotating just to get some different conversations and point of view going. We all love Katie. We all we all know you guys love Chris Katie out there. He's not gone away. We're just going to rotate through. If you don't like me, that's I don't have a problem with that. Just turn it off and go away. <laughs> Um, but it is my um, it is my privilege and honor uh, to sit down and talk one on one with um, Wall Street Jesus. And just as a little plug, um, Jay, I I don't always listen to you in in your room because I'm doing my own thing. But right, what right. I will say is that I I have a ton of and always have a ton of respect for what you do in your room. The amount of information that you give out to everybody, um, your insights, and just generally the conversations with you are so much damn fun that I really enjoy uh, spending time talking to you one-on-one. -on -one. So yeah, I'm, I'm well, likewise, likewise, same, same exact way. I see, feel the same exact way about you. So um, what are we doing? What's going on with this market right now? What's this, what, what do you think we're, uh, do you think this is just a squeeze or do you think that right now what we're seeing is the beginning of a recovery. I, you know, it, it's funny because I think that's all part of what we're seeing here, right? If yeah. you, if you remember, I mean, before this rally even started, and you know, because you follow this stuff as well, mm -hmm. positioning has been so lopsided. It's been that way for for a while, right? For good reason. The market's been a shithole, right? Nobody wants to own anything. Um, you know, especially in the option world, you own any calls, they just, even if they're not going lower, they're, you're premium straining out by each and every minute. Um, but make a long story short, there was always the potential for that bear market catalyst. Once it got lit, you knew that because of the short exposure out there and the lack of exposure on the long side, um, you would get some sort of effect like we're seeing right now. If you remember, we were just talking before we came on, what month was that? The last like real bear market rally we had, uh, what Sharpies got long into. Can remember you share your Can you share your yeah, screen? I was going to do that. Hold on. Yeah, go ahead and share your screen. We, I I love to see the stuff that you that you put up and and what you're looking at for you know for placeholders and yep. markers. Hold on. Let me make yeah, sure go ahead. I do this without blowing everything up. You know me. <laughs> All, right. All right. So here we go. All right. All right. So and generally these like this is. For, for us, like, this is everything we watch on a day-to-day -day basis. You know, yeah. it, it's funny because, Rogero, we always get the question, and you, and you probably get it every minute of the day as well. Um, you know, are we at a bottom? How much more does the rally have to go? You know what I mean? And yep. those are obviously the most difficult questions in the world to answer right now. For sure. Um, but just to, I just I find it fascinating how this squeeze got lit. There was always the gasoline on this bear market rally, right? Because yep. of the pent up shorts and all that. It just needed a catalyst, right? Yes. So what we've talked about um, for a while now is how, you know, literally the Fed's rigging the game to the downside, <clears throat> correct? Yep. They're, are, they're manipulating risk assets lower, raising interest rates, um, the complete opposite of what they've been doing th throughout the whole bull market, right? That's what yes. made the short to intermediate term setup so difficult, right? Yes. Even with even with stocks, you know, down 70, 80 percent. You mentioned a few times down enough for you to become interested in leaps, right? Which you have started the process. Some of the go ahead, so, talk, talk about that quickly. Yep, some of it, right? Not not all of it, because like there are some things, for example, that were kind of the darlings at the very end of the crescendo to the upside. That were you know, and you see it. You see it happen every time we go through a cycle like this, which a lot of people have never seen before. Is those little darlings all of a sudden go down and get cut 70, 80 percent, and they don't ever come back, right. right? There's there are there there are going to be a graveyard full of those companies that just you know, 12 months ago you were looking at it thinking this is the new economy and this is how things are going to go. And you know, people are going to wonder why they're never coming back. It's because it's a a part of the process of of the casualty of flushing out that that's a normal part of the market process that that we're that we're seeing. Exactly. Exactly. So you've been focused more on the names, 
again, not necessarily that you know well, but quality, right? They quality, do. quality at a discount. Quality at a discount requires a lot less effort than trying to find the diamond in the rough, the HKD, the, you know what I mean? Whatever, whatever the flavor of the day is, doesn't interest me because it's, it's too difficult to play with that stuff. I, I need, if you, if you just, if you just take something of quality and, and beat it up and slap it around, that's a, that's a lot easier to, to, you know, to put your money in than it is into what you think could be the next great thing. That's, more, that's much harder more, to do. And more importantly, the reason why you're focused on leaps, you don't mind, you want to be early in a sense, right? Because if you are, you'll add, right? You're yeah, willing I mean, to add the quality. We have, we have certain things that we look for, you know, that, you know, right. we look for, we, we look for a combination of things, right? We look for, Hey, do the technicals support the case? Do, you know, our insiders buying, um, what, you know, what else is, what else is there for us to be able to look at to, to justify. So, you know, for example, we started a position on Microsoft and that's gone really well. Do I expect Microsoft to just keep going up from here? Probably not. But, you know, we have ways of, even if we're buying leaps, we're just not leap only traders, right? We, right. we buy leaps and we protect that. And how do we do it? You know, we, we write against it. We buy short-term puts and calls. Like we stay active and we trade around those positions. We're not just stuck in the sand when we make a decision and, you know, we leg in, we go in in quarters and, you know, it's like, Hey, is it safe to go in the water here? And if it's not, not a big deal. We'll, we'll catch the move back down using shorter dated stuff as a, and the long-term stuff will, will be fine. Right. Uh, and that's, a, I mean, it's a lot clearer of a head to have as, in, as opposed to trying to time yeah. this market so perfectly. Yep. Uh, and, you know, in this environment, which is the most difficult thing to do, obviously. Yep. Right? So I, and, and I find that interesting. You're doing that. Cause I mean, that, that makes total sense to me, uh, especially, you know, where we were, you know, we rally significantly now, um, you know, who knows if it's too far too quick and how much of a breather we need uh, at some point here. Uh, but it, it makes total sense to me, um, a strategy like that, where off the lows where we were. Uh, but what, the point I was trying to make um, and, and why I find that interesting, there's been one thing that's been really different in regards to this if you want to even still call it a bear market rally, a squeeze, whatever label you want to put on it. There's one thing that's been really different that um, as opposed to all the other squeezes that got off to a day or two of upside and got slammed down, right? Yep. And it's financial conditions. It's basically in simple English, right? We talk about the Fed rigging uh, risk assets and equities to the downside. Um, financial conditions are the tool right? Which they used to do that. Okay. Yes. So yep. a whole bunch of things going into those financial conditions index, uh, the market equities, one interest rates, um, credit spreads, all that stuff. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. all, all the stuff that makes up liquidity in a sense. And, you know, we use this chart again, you can find that financial conditions index all over the place, but this is a good chart. We, we look at again in this climate in any other, if we're in a bull market, You'll never see me pull this up in, in my entire life. Yep. But for this particular climate, it, it gives you a good idea of where <clears throat> the Fed rigging cycle is, the way I put it, right? So here's, here's the difference here, okay? Every time you see a breather here, right? Every time you yep. see how this thing's been going up, every time yep. there's been any sort of breather here, okay? Yeah. It allowed for a squeeze. Right. So if you look yes. back, I think this was the big squeeze, the last big one that we had, mm -hmm. which was a real bear market squeeze, the violent up. Right. Yeah. Um, this one was a little smaller of a squeeze just for a couple of days. And here you could see how it's not making the new highs. Right. It's been kind of in check here and in a downtrend. Right. And a lot of people have expected the Fed to tighten financial conditions into this rally because the last thing they want right now with inflation showing some little signs, especially in the commodity complex of easing in a, in a sense, right? The last thing the Fed wants to do is have financial conditions loosen and become easy again. You understand? They yeah. want to keep things tight uh, so they can put a stick of fork in inflation, right? Get rid of it. 
And then they can do whatever they want, implement QE if things get too dicey, cut rates again, whatever their heart desires, right? But this is their only tool against inflation. So the point I'm trying to make here is a lot of, including myself and almost everybody out there, did not expect this to happen for as long as it did. We didn't expect the Fed to allow this to go on, right? And you know that raises the conspiracy theories out there, and that's what we've been talking about. There's a few articles out of Goldman, uh, Larry McDonald had one out there, that the Fed looked Satan in the eyes, in a sense. They tightened financial conditions so aggressively, almost too aggressively, where they felt if they continued on that rapid pace, the economy would go boom. In other words, things would unravel way, you know, way too violently. Uh, the slowdown, in a sense, is what I mean. Uh, and it would be bigger problems, right? Something would break in the, in the financial plumbing or, you, you know, whatever, whatever tends to happen when they do that. Uh, again, yeah. the old saying is uh, when the Fed was, when the Fed slams on the brakes, somebody goes through the windshield, right? That's the old saying. It's very true. <laughs> yeah. So that's kind of the chatter out there is kind of the Fed started to realize that and basically just took a chill pill here and allowed conditions to become easier, right? They stopped draining liquidity. Um, they didn't meet their quota as far as like a quantitative tightening. Remember, they're supposed to do that QT and all that? Yep. Supposedly, they missed their quota. They didn't implement what they were supposed to implement. Um, and we don't know the reason why, you know what I mean? But uh, there's obviously something behind it. So make a long story short, the, the question now becomes, okay, when does the Fed come in and say enough is enough, right? Mm -hmm. um, you got a lot, a lot of professionals, we follow the guy at a bowl of heart net. Um, he thinks if you want to throw a number on there, SPX number is 4,200, right? You want I was to say, just going to ask you that. Do you think that the Fed looks at the at, at the spy and says, "Hey, listen, four twenty is like our our max," and then on the downside, do you think they look at like, "Hey, three fifty is is our number," and and then we can go the other way? What, do you think that they do that? It almost looks like they do. I don't think they do, but it yeah. almost looks that way, doesn't it? Right. It almost yes. looks like they have levels in mind. They um, do. But, That's I I think that they do. I mean, I I get that they do, that they probably don't, but it it does look very conspiratorial. It wouldn't shock us, would it? I mean, with no. everything we've seen, it wouldn't shock us. No. I mean, these guys are, they got caught trading around uh, the COVID <laughs> loads right out loud. <laughs> Nothing would shock us, right? But what I what I do know that they look at, because they admit to looking at it, um, are financial conditions. Yeah. And when they loosen up too much, in all likelihood, if they feel they loosen up too much, they're going to come in and start you know, implementing the rigging system again and start tightening things up. Mm -hmm. um, but a good way for us, there were, here's the best part. Uh, this market's been tricky. It's extremely difficult. I yep. never like to use the word easy ever. The one good thing is there are things out there that we can keep tabs on that will alert us, um, will bring it to our attention if it, they do start aggressively tightening again. Okay, so in other words, you'll see things like this start to move higher and, and go to new highs. You, you know, the credit default swaps and credit spreads we look at on a day-to-day -day basis, you'll see they'll start to widen out, right? So yeah. for those of us who want to be uh, more tactical, right? If you're buying leaps, you're, you're hoping for weakness to add, and then you have a strategy to implement if you do add. So maybe it doesn't really apply there. But when you're looking to be a little more a lot more tactical in a sense, these are things you have to be aware of. As much as you may not have an interest in them, you have to be aware of them. You know, um, if you see these things starting to happen, you don't want to buy dips anymore. You understand? Because sure. what it tells us is the Fed's rigging the game again, right? Yep, yep. So the point I'm getting at here, uh, basically, Ron Terrell, in this whole conversation, is if you ask me if the rally has any further to go, I have no idea, but of course, as I'm looking at the information in front of me, I'll I'll have a good feel on a day to day basis of where we're at. Does that make sense? You know, it what does. I mean? Instead it does. Of forecasting, uh, you know, two three months out of, of where we'll be. That's um, too hard. 
Yeah, right now it's I find it almost impossible, in a, right? Yeah. In a sense, yeah. impossible. Um, so so that's where I'm at right now. And like I give a quick example, quick example, right? Um, we look at this on an intraday basis, right? And you could see what this thing did today. Okay. Now there was a fade early in the morning where you know people think the, the market's overextended. Maybe you get a reversal, right? The reversal could be quite harsh. You don't want to get caught in that. You don't want to buy the dip in that and get run over. This pretty much told us, you know, throughout the whole entire day that there was no tightening involved, right? So there was no Fed coming into the picture. There was no financial conditions tightening intraday that were going to play a part in selling, you know? And, and you talk about conspiracy theory. Like, I think that a lot of pros on the street see this and until they see tightening start to enter the system, they're going to scramble and get long and, and do their thing, right? And Why not? To take advantage of it. Yep. So there's a lot of that going on. And I know the average guy out there is not too interested in it. Um, but this, this, is what's, this is what's been the catalyst behind this rally. This is what lit the match um, and basically squeezed all that, all that money that's been on the short side, sitting there comfortably uh, off, the, off the recent lows. And we could talk about that a bit. Um, if you want. Um, well, let me let me just ask you a quick question to, about this, because you have you ha in your brain, you have so many different things that you look at. One of the things that's difficult just for me to, right. to, to grab onto is, OK, what you know, are there are there five things or are there do you have 200 things in your brain? And when things just line up like it's a Tetris game, you're like, hey, these things now are what. I'm looking at and make sense, or do you have like these are five things that I always go to and look at, and the the conditions now, you know, you know, are begging you to look at this, for example. Um, but are there, you know, four or five things that are always your your main go tos that that, that, that give that that are your question. north star? That's a great question because if you know me, that's the last thing I want to do. <laughs> but I, I I I said this at the start um, for a reason. It's the environment we're in, and it's a rare environment we're in. You understand? Like yeah. when, if the Fed is implementing QE, Ronchero, I'm looking at two things. You know, you understand? I'm only looking at sweeper activity and yep. short-term sentiment for entries, and that's it. You yeah. understand? Because yeah. um, the Fed's rigging the game to the upside. And yep. that's been the majority of this market, in a sense, has been the Fed rigging the game to the upside. So for the most part, I keep it real simple because big picture wise, again, the Fed is reading the game in a certain direction. I want to take advantage of that. Right now, it's the rare occasion where the Fed is reading the game against us. You understand? Well, if you're- Yeah, well, no, 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 I do, I do because for, for 10 years, the Fed has basically been a built-in put. Anytime yeah. the market had had gone into what people thought was, oh, we've topped out and this is the correction, it was to me, it was it, it was very clear that no, this like you're 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 missing what's happening. And this is the opposite now. The, the total opposite. Yeah. I mean, and again, not to make it sound too simple, but that's why every correction or any dip was viable when the Fed put was in play. You understand? Yeah, yeah you, it was your put for sure. Exactly. So yeah. Basically, like I said, when the Fed's ringing the game in, in that direction, right, in the mm -hmm. bull, on the bullish side, the two things we, I want to pay attention to is sweeper activity, where's the hot money going, right? Yep. And that's kind of my stock selection, too, in a sense. Yep. And I'm utilizing sentiment on every dip so I can buy those dips. You understand? Okay. Yeah. Now, let, talk to me about sentiment real quick. When you say sentiment, are you do you use? Because what I really love about what you post at the end of the day right. is tactical sentiment. I'm very visual. That gives me a very good indication, and all I have to do is look at that, and I just look at the squeezometer. And I'm I'm sure today your tactical sentiment is going to be in the red because the yep. squeezometer was at 65. That says to me I can start looking for some pulls. Exactly. Exactly. Now, and and as you know, because you we've been together for a bit in. A normal market, again, in the normal market, uh, as normal as it could be with the Fed rigging the game to the upside, but in the normal market, when you had a bullish tactical sentiment signal or mm -hmm. a squeezometer in the 30s, that was insta-buy. You wouldn't yeah, even it was think for about sure. it, right? Yeah. 
You yep. would just look for any sweeper activity that in a name you liked and you would find an entry and nine out of 10 times you would make money. You understand? True. Yeah. Where now it's not nowhere near as efficient. You understand? We yep. see now where, you know, tactical sentiment can stay in buy territory for a few days before you see any sort of bounce. You understand? Because again, the Fed is rigging the game against you. You understand? Yeah. But you can't rely on those tools as much uh, because of the environment. Um, so that's basically like in a normal environment, things get a lot easier, right? You want to keep things simple, like we, like you're saying. You want to stick to your edge. Use a couple of, of um, indicators that you rely on, you have confidence in, and that's it. When when things get rocky, you have two choices. You either got to adjust, right? And that comes with experience because you know what to look at in, in certain times. But yep. you either got to adjust and look at different things or you move to the sidelines, you know, and take it easy in a sense, or at least take it easy. Um, because if you rely on the same things in a rigged bull market, in a ferocious bear market, you could get your ass handed to you. You know what For I mean? For sure. Yeah, yeah. 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 So I, that's basically where I'm at. But I like to keep it simple just as much as you do. Trust me. I don't have the brain capacity to... Uh, <laughs> I don't know about that. Like sometimes, I, you know, I, I'm on the West Coast and sometimes I'll just like randomly at you know at like 10 o'clock my time which is the middle of the night for you will look at my phone and you're posting stuff on twitter i'm like what does the man sleep or not like you know it's, it's funny because i always i find you know sometimes i can't sleep and i and i find something interesting like i give you an example last night i think it was goldman and i think it, it was from larry mcdonald they put out a note um on the, exactly what we were talking about on the webinar which you know, why is the Fed pausing here? What's going on? Right. And so I saw two write-ups in the middle of the night on it. I was like, oh shit, you know, and I, I posted <laughs> I posted in the room to private Twitter, just, you know, if anybody's up where they could see it in the morning, because uh, we're looking for that information. So, you know, that comes with the passion of the game, Ron Chero. It's almost yeah. like I find everything interesting, even though it may not be actionable in a sense. Yeah. Uh, but that's just because I'm a degenerate, you know that. Wait, yeah, I know I do. And, you know, I, it was actually a welcome distraction because, um, you know, not to skew too far off topic, but um, my my giants did just have given up. And I, I was just watching them getting relentlessly punched in the face by the Dodgers again. So th your posts were a welcome distraction at the time. So yeah, I, I can't feel bad for you with those giants anyway, because I don't know how they win games to begin with. Okay? It's true. <laughs> Every year with that team, but it's I'm, true I'm glad I, I, I'm glad I took your mind off things right I, I think Southern California has thrown down many billions of dollars to make sure that oh um, my God, the, the, right? the, those of us up north never see a ring again so yeah but they they do a pretty good job of hanging in there every year they every do year. hey let me ask you a quick question about uh um two things number one anti-vix tell me how you and feel free to bring it up on on the screen Feel free to, to show me how you use Antivix, what importance it holds to you. And then I want to ask you a question about Gamma Gang. And the reason I want to ask you a question about Gamma Gang is because yep. I think Gamma Gang is, is misunderstood and overhyped. And I think that traders have a tendency to rely on that and don't even understand what it is or what it can do for them. I think it should be left in the hands of um, either bigger traders or fund managers. And I wanted to get your opinion on that. Yeah, the, the, first of all, the word, just when you hear the word gamma, you got like everybody, any piece of information out there, uh, you know, traders want buy, to, to equate to buy or sell signals all the time. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. And a lot of that gamma stuff, you know, especially from my understanding, because you get into the weeds on, on the whole gamma. Big time. Oh, and it doesn't then it doesn't help. No, it, it's not it's not always actionable. You know, it's more of getting a gauge on your risk at times mm -hmm. than being an actionable trade. You know, so like I give you an example. Um, you know, the Gamma Gang has been um talking a lot about recently uh the amount of puts being sold in, in the market and how that increases the odds of crash risk right okay that's Does that's that a logical mean, argument right the, now okay just to break it down simple if there's an excessive amount of 
put selling in the market and those put sellers get caught off sides by a, a downdraft, right? Obviously, yeah. it's going to feed into the selling, right? So Correct. Okay. The odds, though, of them getting caught, you know, even though those odds are, have increased a bit because they, they are all sides, they're still not favorable odds. You understand? It's not yeah. like these guys are going to get caught and there's a 90% probability that they get caught. They yeah. still need a, a, a flash crash or something to get caught in. You understand? Right. Yeah. So a lot of times like traders will hear that and they think, oh, I got to get short and thinking it's a high probability trade when in fact, it's not a high probability trade. It's a low probability trade with a big payout. You understand? Right. Yes. So you can't, it's something you don't expect to click, but if it does, you're going to get paid. You understand? It's like going to the racetrack and catching that 20 to one shot, <laughs> right? It's not, it doesn't usually happen. <laughs> so, and then, you know, you find traders who, you know, place a bet off that. And when the market doesn't crash and they lose their money, you know, they get disgruntled, not understanding that, you know, these things are, you don't, you don't hit eight out of 10 of these trades that, that they, they talk about, right? You're hitting you one or two out of the 10. And if you do, you're making a lot of money. Well, so, and if you're going to, if you're going to equate it to horse racing, it, it requires you to be very, very patient and to spread it around, right? Exactly. You can't, you, exactly. Yeah. You, yeah exactly. you got to have a plan. So, Anything with, with gamma, you know, again, gamma, when, when you get into the weeds of it, could be an extremely difficult thing to understand. There's a yep. simple way, a simple takeaway from it. But like you said, it's not what a lot of people think as far as an actionable trade every single day. You know, yep. it's just, it's not, it's not structured that way. Yep. Um, so again, I, the reason why I even um, look at it or bring it up at times is almost like, a, in the backdrop of things, you know, like the gamma game could be talking about crash risk, but if all, you know, all the key signals I'm looking at are showing me players are short and there's a high probability squeeze coming, it's not like I'm shorting that signal because um, gamma game is telling me about the uh, small odds of a flash crash. You know what? You understand what I'm saying? It's almost I, like I do. a backdrop type thing. So here's the other thing about Gamma Gang, and I, I think when I see so many people running around, now you may not get this reference. Some some of the listeners on it will because I, I had I had kids, and these kids watched SpongeBob growing up. So my my, my relation to Gamma Gang is when SpongeBob goes to the freaking uh, sea cucumber nerds that want to go, you know, be a part of the jellyfish society. I'm like, <laughs> hey, all y'all trying to hop onto this Gamma Gang thing. Are, are, are looking to join the sea cucumbers to, to go hang out in jellyfish fields. I'm like, what are you all doing? You're, you're, you're wasting your time looking for something you're not going to find and, and be a part of a club. And you don't even know who's in that club. Yeah. It's, it's, you know, and I try to listen, people, you know, they, they're going to do what they want to do. And, you know, sometimes what you say is going to go in here in one ear and out the other ear. Um, <laughs> but again, it's just, it's just stuff that, for me, like I want to know about, but it's not stuff that's going to be actionable for me yep. over the more important things out there. You understand? I do. Yeah. It doesn't make or break my setup or my trade. You know, you know, it's just, yep. I want to have knowledge of what's going on as far as on, on the gamma end. Because in, in my opinion, it, it plays a bigger role in the market these days. You know what I mean? Yeah. Where, yeah. you know, obviously it didn't. So it's more important. Uh, but like you said, you, if, if you know what to do with that information, you know, if you're going to try to turn it into some day trade or uh, flip type strategy, you know, I, I don't know how good that's going to be. You know, I yeah. don't do it. I'm, so I wouldn't know. All right. So then tell me more about this, the, the anti-VIX and how much emphasis you place on anti-VIX. Yeah. So the, the anti-VIX just basically is telling us um, strictly about the VIX and not about the indexes, right? So it's got nothing yep. to do with the S&P 500, the Qs or anything else. Um, but it, it just tells us on an intraday basis of how, how much FOMO is coming into the VIX as far as buying is concerned, or how aggressive are they getting selling VIX, right? And what I've realized over the course of my career looking at this is that, again, usually on an intraday basis, at extremes, they 
usually follow, they, they prelude turning points. They usually come before turning points. So I'll give you an example, okay? Um, oh, here, wait, this is, is this updated? This is the last one we have here? Uh, hold on, I'll give you a, a perfect example. Here we go, okay? So yeah. you see this here, right? Yes. So this, what this was telling us, again, nothing to do with anything else but the VIX, but what this was telling us was players were aggressively buying VIX, okay? So they were protecting hedging for whatever reason. Okay, that's what this extreme is telling us on an intraday mm -hmm. basis. Okay. Right? So the way I look at it is if I'll give an example. Right now, you know, I'm paying attention to how financial conditions are, right? If they're staying loose, I'm looking for entries into pullbacks. Okay. okay. Yep. We ha we have a little pullback here, and you see that VIX players are getting too aggressive on the buy side. They're getting nervous. They're concerned about a pullback. This well, likely this is a decent squeeze opportunity on an intraday basis. So you look for entries in this window around here, right? It's almost like you use it with whatever you're looking at, Ontario, right? Okay. If this lines up, like, for example, with you. If this lines up <clears> with <throat> a, a strong support level or Fibonacci level on a pullback yep. that you're looking at, okay? Yep. It makes you feel better that, you know, you've got players that are leaning a little too aggressively, in VIX and can get squeezed here. You understand? It can pr provide some ammo for that balance you may be looking for. So where do, where where do I find this indicator on an you know an, an intraday basis? Where does where does that live? This is from Sentiment Trader. Sentiment Trader. Oh, okay. So I mean, does it does this go tick for tick then, or does it update this every updates every thirty minutes? Every thirty minutes. Thirty okay. minutes. Every half hour. Okay. Okay. Every half hour. Gotcha. So again, in when when the Fed is running the game and we're in a regular bull market. Okay, and I'm not talking about parabolic move to the upside. We could be range bound, even better. Okay, you you will see this like intraday is a beauty. You know what I mean? It's a beauty. Yep. But when you get into environments like we're in now, especially when the VIX gets hot, you could you know you could definitely buy a, a buy signal here and get run over. So you can't just do it blind. You still yep. gotta implement your stop losses and all that shit that you do. Um, but they work really well with intraday entry points. Okay. Using it with something else. That's that's basically the best way to put it. And when you do when you look at that and consider it, is the time frame of your trade then going to be for the day, or is it shorter, or is it like if, if you use it and you enter something, what are you most, looking for most to, of the you time, know, to get out of it? Most of the time it's for an intraday play. That's okay predominantly what I use it for. But let's say like in we're in a raging bull market, right? And the market's so strong, you know, that uh, you got non-believers, no one's believing in a rally and you can't get that pullback because, mm -hmm. right, the market's never pulled back. Yep. The best you can ask for sometimes is a bullish anti-VIX signal intraday. And that's, that's your best entry for the month sometimes. You understand? Okay, I do, so yeah. Depending on the circumstance, if things, you know, for in a bullish environment, I'll use it for overnight entries to find entries, um, but not not in this environment. I wouldn't. Okay, and let, let me ask you. Let me ask you a follow up question. You've seen the formula for how the VIX is calculated, correct? What do you mean? Have you ever seen the formula that's used? Oh, to, for the actual VIX. You're for the about actual VIX. VIX. I, I don't know exactly what it is, but what is it? It's well, I'm not going to spit it out, but I mean, I you you can you can see it on Investopedia if you look it up. It's a very complex it's formula. Weird. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But but the, the the point of it is that you know if you're doing something overnight, the thing that I find with the VIX, and I always discourage um, traders in in my room to to trade VIX. Like if you're going to trade something related to VIX, VXX is as scary as you want it to be. Because the VIX is, is probably the most manipulative, manipulated derivative, especially when it comes to the pricing of those options of any other vehicle that you have to invest in at your fingertips as, as, a, as a regular day trader. It, it's a really dangerous thing do you to use for the uneducated. Besides, do you even use it for hedging purposes at all? The only reason I use VIX is to tell me how cheap long-term out-of-money spy protection is going to be. So when VIX is at its lowest points, 
I know that spy protection out of the right. money out in time is is going to I'm going to feel good about paying for that insurance policy when it's in here. I'm not going to feel good about paying for that insurance policy because it's overpriced. Gotcha. Yeah, I never trade VIX either. Never. I, I just look at it for uh, sentiment purposes. A lot of times that's about it. Uh, yeah. I don't remember the last time I last time I traded any. I think once I traded one of the um, uh, it was a day trade, though. Um, one of those like SVXY things because um, yep. I wanted to kind of make a short play on VIX at the time intraday. Uh, yeah. But that's the extent of it. Runter. I never, okay. never played VIX. Never played so, VIX. And you're you're still sticking just to individual names. You're not looking at you're not looking at playing any. Um, are you playing any spy or any? I, like I've that? been I've been again just on an intraday basis. I've uh-huh. been playing uh, some of those levered ETFs. Um, I'm an individual. Again, when things are are normal and good, I'm an individual name guy. Runter. You yeah, know right. what I mean? Yeah. That's like that's where my real edge from the tools I use, that, that's where it's at. You know, that's yep. like for sweeper activity, that's my edge is not off the S&P 500 in regard to sweeper activity. It's individual names, you know? Yep. It's an idea generator, especially in normal market conditions. Yep. Um, so, you know, in this market, it's been real tricky up until this squeeze recently to play individual names, even intraday, you know? Yep. It's been yep. real a real pain in the ass. Yeah. So I've been you I've been playing more ETFs and shit like that of recent, um, but I just can't wait for the time to get back uh, to individual names again. That's that's you know that's my niche. That's what I, I agree. I agree. Do Do you have any individual names that you'd like to have longer term? They, you know, it, it's funny because we were talking about this recently. Usually, like we get into a market like we have right now. Usually, I have a decent list of names. That even though I'm not buying, I'm eyeing off action um, because they're doing what you're doing. They're starting to accumulate with time in uh, into weakness. You understand? Yep. So again, let's uh, give an example uh, of Microsoft. When the stock is down, we would see you know leaps or a year out, and somebody building these size positions. Um, you know, in the option world, in these names. We just, we haven't seen much of that. We haven't seen that commitment that we usually see. And it's got nothing to do with market conditions because I've seen that type of buying be really early into corrections. You know what I mean? They show up yeah. early and if you tail them right away, you're, you're going to be on the water. You know what For I sure. mean? Yeah. For sure. Yep. But um, we haven't really seen much of that, very little of it. And to answer your question, I, I really don't have much of anything I'm eyeing. Because um, like what I would normally start doing is what you're doing right now. That's that's like how I would start. I would start planting seeds in names that are seeing accumulation, you know, just just to own them, get a, own a little piece just to start and, yeah. and see if they buy more into weakness. I'm hoping, again, that day will come. You know, um, but just the flow hasn't hasn't been there for that. It just hasn't been there for that. So hopefully it will, you know, come the fall. Maybe the come the fall, we get a little uh, another little shake out here. And that's when we'll start to see some of that buying come in. You know, the fall, I, it, I know we're not there yet, but the fall is kind of already here. Don't you think? Meaning what? That, well, uh, it's, it, it, we, you've, you've seen you, you've kind of seen. Um, a, a, a big shakeout, a little bit of a bounce back up. And now that you've got a, a majority of the big companies that have released earnings, this is, they've had the opportunity to basically pull the rug, reset. The CEOs have been given a blank slate to say, okay, you know, yeah, we're everybody's down, but we we took the beating. And now that we've taken the beating, the bad news is out. And if, if if we miss going forward from here, we're really in trouble. <laughs> so, right, right, right. Yeah, I agree. You know, that. meaning yeah. meaning there, you know, that now you're you're already you already have an eye on the fall going into the end of the year, even though it's even though it's August, right? Even though it's August, I think that the way that the market dynamics have changed over the years, that you know, you didn't see the fall dynamics start to kick in until let's say mid to late September, early October. I kind of feel like it's already starting to form now. And by the middle of August, we'll, we'll kind of already be there. 
It could, it could be, it could very well be. And here's, here's the, the concern uh, that I have. And again, things will change um, if I start to see uh, constructive signs into weakness. Like the problem with what's going on right now is there's buying out there. Um, but the, the reason for the buying is, is twofold. One, earnings and earnings mm -hmm. exposure because players just didn't have any equity exposure for earnings or anything. Yeah. Okay, when they realize earnings, wait a second, earn, earnings aren't a complete disaster. They got to scramble to to own some names, right? Because they had yeah. nothing. So yeah. that's where the buying's coming in. One and you know, there's just a lot of forced buying out there from shorts getting squeezed. They got to buy calls to hedge, right? Think about it, all that short money out there. I mean, yeah. and and this is one of the things, Ronchero. Again, we talk about catalyst is a perfect segue for it like catalyst for the rallies, right? Like, look at this. Just quickly, three charts I'm gonna show you and you see what the hell I'm talking about here, right? So these are the CTAs. They basically just follow trend in a sense, okay? They're very mm -hmm. systematic. So as VIX and market, you know, if the VIX goes up, the market goes down, they gotta take down their risk exposure, right? Yep. The opposite yep. happens, they gotta add risk exposure. So yep. these guys have been sitting, this is, S&P 500 and NASDAQ, they've been sitting on a short, net short position for quite a while here now, okay? And as the market starts to move against that position, which it is now, they have to add some of that exposure back on. This is not a choice they can make. There's no emotion involved. You understand? It's yeah. just based on levels of, you know, of risk in the market. So, they need to buy. And if you, I don't know if you've seen the numbers uh, we've been uh, posting out there from, you know, from Goldman and from JP Morgan, they've been tallying up what CTAs need to buy dollar amount, you know, in the billions, you're talking about crazy, crazy amount of buying that's been coming in, right? So that's a, a big bulk of like, you ask who's buying right now, who's being squeezed. It, it's a lot of these guys. Yeah. Is, look at these guys. These are your buddies here. I'll show you next. <laughs> um, this is the chart sentiment trader that we look at. Um, I put it all in one word. Let me just see. Hold on. Uh, is this updated? I, well, this is July 30th. Okay. So same thing here, right? Here's the zero line right here. Oh, that's not a straight line, but you know what I mean. Okay. So into this pull here, you can see how they've been reluctant to get short, right? They don't have much equity exposure. They've been light, so that but they've been reluctant to bet on downside. Okay, yeah. they didn't think the market had, you know, enough to, to to see substantial downside, so they didn't want to get in that short. They finally did it into this pull, Bink, right? So now into these lows, you got these guys short as well, right? And now as the market moves against them, what do they need to do? They need to cover those shorts. Okay, how do they do that? They buy. Right, so yep. that, that's what I mean by forced buying. That's that's behind this rally. Yeah, uh, and the point I'm making is what I'm eager to see now happen. Right, is eventually when we get, even if it's just a pullback for a couple of days a week or whatever it is, when we get some weakness, that's when we're going to see the real buying. If it's around, show up. You understand? Yeah, yeah. The, for sure. the buying that shows up into weakness. That's not going to be the forced buyers. That's going to be buyers who are looking to take advantage because they changed their tune now, right? They've changed their sentiment now. Yeah. Um, I just want to show you one more chart here. No, please do. And this is another one of your favorites. <laughs> These guys. <laughs> I mean, look at this. Okay. Obviously, down here, sure. Look, look at this. Yeah, you see how they took the plunge here? Boop. So now this is in the S P futures. Okay. Yep. They actually net short, have a bigger short position than they did into the COVID lows. Wow. So yeah. All of these guys are getting squeezed now. That's that's yeah. why this, this rally is as strong as it is. Yeah. You know, and usually what we see is this bullish phase, right? I don't know if it continues to go higher, but we're likely going to see dips being bought, even if it results in chop. This bullish phase likely doesn't come to an end until they give up on that short position. You understand? They cover the bulk of that short position. That's what, well, yeah, that's when it happens. Yeah, yeah. So that's another reason how it's hard to predict what the market's going to do two months from now. You know, 
what are these guys going to be doing? How are they right. positioned? Yeah, right? you don't know what the trigger is going to be, right? Yeah, yeah. So, you know, there, there are a lot of things that um, I'm excited to keep an eye on here going forward. Um, but the one here's the macro thing that, that makes me nervous. And maybe you can make me feel better about it. <laughs> the one thing I'm nervous about on the macro side, all the, and, and you can relate to this because you've been in the game, all the Fed has done this year as far as tightening and as far as draining liquidity and raising rates, okay? You know the same, the same thing when they do, when they cut rates and implement QE, you don't see the effect on the economy to minimum six to nine months after they start taking that action. Yes, okay? right? exactly, yep. Okay, so the, the fear, not necessarily the fear, I'm, not, I'm almost looking forward to it, but the thing that uh, it concerns me a little bit about the second half and into early 2023, mm -hmm. I think the economy is going to start to feel some of the, the stuff that the, the, the impact of what the Fed's been doing. You understand? So yep. what that means, the economic numbers, um, earnings, all that stuff are likely going to deteriorate even more so, okay? And I think that's, I, I could be wrong, but I think that's the buying opportunity if there's weakness. Because I think a lot of it, like you're saying, a lot of it's been priced in, yeah. right? But we don't have the ugliness yet. You understand? Earnings were unbelievable considering what they were expecting. You right. know, when we start to see the ugliness and that's when you get that real capitulation and um, people don't want to own anything because it's so scary, right? I think that's where uh, the sweet spot for a potential entry um, is going to end up showing up. Now, again, that's just my hunch here. You know what I mean? Uh, mm -hmm. But you agree, right? With the Fed, usually what? It's two, three quarters that you see uh, the Fed's work in the economy and stuff like that. Yeah, and I think, it's, I think it's confusing also because this environment hasn't been around for over a decade. And the market is traditionally a forward-looking instrument right. signaling, I think incorrectly, I'm with you, I think incorrectly that we're that you're seeing the beginning of, you know, oh, everything's going to be okay again. Right. I, I don't I don't share that view, which is why as I'm starting to nibble on some of these things, I want to participate alongside, but my 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 thought isn't it's going to be a straight line from bottom left to top right. My thought is there's likely to be some heartburn that comes along with this. Yeah, well, that's why I think the approach you're taking, I think, is a smart approach here because what you're doing is you're dipping your beak here. You're in, right, just to start, get the ball rolling, right, yep. and you have some exposure. And if you do get that ugliness, whenever it shows up, you know, uh, at the end of the year or whatever the case you can look at that as an opportunity to add, you right. understand? And yep. you at least have some exposure now. Exactly. Um, but it's easier said than done because you like you have a strategy to implement, right? When If it does get ugly, you know what you need to do to get through that ugliness. You understand? Where a lot of traders, they have a tough time is sitting through the ugliness, not doing anything, and just sitting with long exposure, right? That yeah, can I really get to you. I think I think the issue there for a lot of traders, um, and it's just my just my observation is that what happens is that traders like to be active and in an environment where you're used to, let's say, scalping. And scalping is something that we that we participate in because it generates good money to throw on the sidelines so that you can participate in in you know these these other longs but exactly. if you if you mix or you if you don't understand that there's a difference between having a long-term strategic focus and you can't separate it from your short short-term tactical yep. you have a very big problem on your hands if you switch back and forth and i think a lot of traders don't have account sizes that allow them to to do both. They have to pick one or the other, and if they flip flop sides, they they really get beat up. Oh yeah, I know. I I I used to be around a lot of traders that I worked with that um had to keep it separated in separate accounts. You I still do that. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. they you know they 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 it would play mind games with them and interfere um with but going short term, long term, and shit like that. So hundred percent, yeah, without a doubt. Uh, but yeah, so. 
that's that's kind of how uh, I'm looking at things, and I'm being, you know, I'm, you know me, I'm a glass half full guy. I'm optimistic that even if it does get ugly, and the chance is it's going to at least be volatile, right? I mean, yeah. without the Fed put in play, it's not going to be straight up. We know that. I mean, yep. That's the only reason it goes straight up. Um, so I'm hoping when we start to see things get a little rocky again, that's when um, some of the real buying shows up. Maybe that's what they're waiting for, um, for you know, as far as entries are concerned, to start nibbling on some things and getting long. Uh, yep. we'll, we'll see, you know, who, who knows? We might be in our bunker come December. We have no idea what the hell's going to go on, you know? Um, do, you, do you have a bunker? I, I like to be quiet about the bunker, but let's just say <laughs> I have it all set up uh, and it's ready to go just in case. It's stock. Is, yeah, it, yeah, is yeah. it on the East Coast? Or are you coming to the interior? I will not reveal you... that information. I cannot. Oh, okay. oh come on. I think, I, think what, I think what happens is you fuel up the jet and you're, you're making a move for, to Fiji or something. I think you're you're getting someplace far away. I have an undisclosed underground bunker. It's all set up. It's well equipped, uh, well armed. <laughs> off for the dogs. All all set and ready to go if that time comes. Two thousand eight scarred me for the rest of my life. Um, so I will not be unprepared ever again. Ever again. <laughs> I don't blame you. I don't blame you. I, I have, yeah, I think you need a bug out plan, especially if you can afford to have a bug out plan. You got to have one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely. Definitely. Uh, <laughs> How many it's been uh, an entertaining market, anyhow, right? No matter what, I'm, it's been entertaining and uh, something new for us, anyway. There is, a, I, th I think there is opportunity every single day. There are days where um, it's better than others. And I can tell you from a struggle standpoint, what I have struggled with is catching the right part of the move and what i've what i've been forced to do is for example in the morning we're always getting some kind of a gap making it very difficult to pick some direction i'll get direction correct let's say in the first 5 or 10 minutes but yeah. i ha it it forces me to be aggressive and then what winds up happening is the move going the opposite way was the real move for the day right. and because i can't participate i've got to wait and when it when it finally you know finds a place where it's going to top out a little bit, I look for a little bit of a retrace trade. So right. for me, that's the that's the only thing uh, I've missed the majority of the moves in the middle, and I've just been scalping at at these retrace moves, and that's that's what's been frustrating to me is because I like getting the the big part of uh, the moves, and I, I haven't yeah. really been able to latch right. onto them for the last two weeks. Yeah, I, I, the only time uh, for me, and it's very similar, but the only time that my best trades, um, as far as intraday has been concerned, um, you, you talk about gaps, has been when the market has gapped lower. You understand? Yeah. yeah. And we've had some signs of bullish momentum coming in, sweeper activity. I can buy into that weakness, and you get those red to green squeezes. Um, and that's it. Usually I'm pulling the plug there. You know what I mean? Which a lot of times is early. Uh, yep. But the problem is the market doesn't just get down, right? It gaps up, it opens up flat, it does a million different other things. So well, it gives you it gives you three or four different looks, and they're they're very well disguised, at least they are to me, as to what the intention or where where that move is actually in a pop its head. And then you know, by the time you get there, you're like, ah, I got I, now I gotta wait and I gotta look for the a little yep. bit of a of a retrace trade because you don't want to you don't want to get your fingers stuck in the mousetrap, right? So yeah, 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 without a doubt, without a doubt, been, it's been it, tricky. It gives you, like you said, it gives you the like depending on what opportunity you look for. The market has given you that opportunity from time to time, but not as much as we would like. You know what I mean? Not as much yeah. as we would like. That's, I agree. Uh, I agree. That's the market for you. Yeah. All right. How many dogs are you up to these days? Uh, I'm still on nine. Um, I had 10. The oldest one passed away, but this is a while now. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, okay. But yeah, I got nine. And my now my oldest one, which is the other Jack Russell, is getting, you know, she's not uh, doing too great. Oh, I'm uh, sorry. So I don't know how much. I, well, you know, the years go by and yeah. you know, we all die. What are we going to do? I know. You know? <laughs> um, but the question is, the question that everybody around me wants to know is, will there be any new additions? Uh, to the uh, dog collection, and I, I don't know yet. I don't know yet. I, I think I, I think the answer is yes. It's yeah, just a matter. I can of... never say no for certain because I've said no. I think it was after number three or four 
Um, and it just kept going. You know what I mean? You can't say no to your girls. They're going to come home <laughs> exactly. with a pet and th that pet's going to have a home. That's you see how I, I, I sound like I'm in charge here, right? I sound like I'm, on, <laughs> I'm in charge. But it couldn't be further from the truth. Uh, but yeah, the dogs are great. The do I enjoy the company of the dogs more than I do human beings. It's a, bit, a sad thing to say, but they're loyal. You know what I mean? I, I come back from work. They act like they haven't seen me in six months. Tails wagging, <laughs> tongues hanging out. You know, they just want to sit on the couch and watch the Yankee game with me, and they're tickled pink. They're exactly. So easy, easily amused. So even uh, and I, I haven't, I haven't, uh, I haven't tuned in in a while. How's how's Jules doing? She Jules hanging in there? Uh, yeah, yeah. Jules is no little puppy anymore. She's not the little the the youngest one anymore. Is she still raising hell every time a fly lands on a windowsill? <laughs> She calmed down a little. I got yeah. a, the newest puppy. He's the one driving everybody nuts. Google. Um, I got his name's a, Google. Google. Yeah, yeah, yeah. His name is Google. <laughs> I like uh, it. You gotta see. I got a cute picture of him with his tongue hanging out. He's cute, but he's a nut. You know, they're puppies. They're yeah, I mean, noses I've, and everything. I've got an I've got a nine month old at home too, and he's he he's crazy. And when what kind? When, what kind? He's a he's a Bernadoodle. Wait, wait. Oh, okay. So that's half what? Half half, her, half Bernie's mountain dog combined with a poodle. Wow. I never seen that before. So my, uh, my, my, my wife is allergic, doesn't like a lot of the hair. So these dogs, oh, shedding, uh, right? you know, they, right. They, yeah. So they, they don't shed um, really good temperament. Bernie's mountain dogs are, are very smart dogs. They're, they're, you know, they're chill. They're happy. They have really good personality, similar to a golden retriever. And then, right, right. You know, you get the poodle, which helps the size, but then you get a little bit of quirkiness with with a poodle, right? Yeah, so yeah, yeah. you got you get you get kind of the best of both worlds there. And wow, I never yeah, seen that mix. That's when he a... uh, when he goes when he goes nuts, like the you know the the house the house comes apart when he decides <laughs> we're all gonna have a a, a goofy day. <laughs> yeah, that's a puppy though, you know. And, and sometimes you can get like bad. I had like my Jack, that's the oldest now. Oof, what a bad puppy. We were so close to giving her away. That's how bad she was. We <laughs> ate the furniture, ripped up everything, drove everybody insane. You know, so sometimes you could get those bad puppies, but they're always, you know, they're so curious about everything, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, I agree. They bring, they bring you more joy than, uh, than, oh, than yeah. distress. So. They know, that's why you're having a bad day. They're always around. You know what I mean? And yep. they're never in a bad mood. You have what? Just a one dog? No, we have, uh, so I've got the puppy and then on the other end of the extreme, my other, um, I've got a, a, a Labradoodle yeah, yeah, and she's, um, she's, she's 13 in October. So Ooh. she's starting to get up there. Wow. Good for her. Yeah. But she, the puppy get kind of gave her some new life, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah. The young ones keep them alive. It's so true. Exactly. Exactly. It's so true. So you, you got two, you're getting there. All right. We've got to yeah, add a couple that's... more. Once you break through the four mark, then it just snowballs. You know what I mean? You start, it's like a winning streak. You just start rattling them off. I'd lose my mind. I, I, <laughs> I barely keep it together right now. Can you imagine looking at like nine dogs running around you, though? No. It's like a circus. It's like a that's... circus. Well, that's why that's whenever I hear you talk about the dogs, and like, <laughs> all, the, all the coffee you spill and uh, all the keyboards you go through and as many dogs as you, I just like your, your house has got to be like a, a, a living I, zoo. I, I the people, they know, I have like trace marks. They know what room I'm in, where I'm going, <laughs> coffee stains all over the place. I'm like a walking tornado. You give me, like, <laughs> give me one cup of coffee. I can... What if I mean I can make a hot mess? Just one cup of coffee, give me, and you talk about disaster. You'll find <laughs> coffee on the walls. How to get there? <laughs> one cup, just one cup. Yeah. Just oh my! Cup. We need a we need a highlight reel. I think we can put it together. I think my my favorite thing though is to is is when you when you spill coffee and your reaction. There's there we got to put together a highlight reel. There's probably a good half an hour worth of that uh, footage that's what everybody that exists. Says. There's so many webinars with, you know, so many <laughs> keyboards have gone on those webinars. It's so true. Uh, 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 all right. Well, listen, Jay, there's a great chat. I appreciate it. And, yeah, let's um, do it again, Ronchero. Yep. We'll do Always it again soon. It. All right, my friend. Have all a right, great have night. Have a great night, everybody. All right. See ya.